sleepapnea.org presents Portraits Living with Sleep Apnea, a conversation with Christina Samonic. Christina, what is a speech pathologist? A speech pathologist is a very broad career, to be fair. Um, we treat everything from... Um, lisps and stutters, which I think is what people traditionally think of a speech pathologist as doing, um, working in schools and helping children. Um, in my previous career as a speech pathologist, I actually worked in hospitals, helping people with brain injuries, working and to regain their ability to communicate, but also working on swallowing disorders. Um, and that's kind of where I got interested in sleep apnea. Where speech pathology and sleep apnea meet is in the resting postures of the mouth, so that can be the posture of the tongue, that can be oral or nasal breathing, so the lips should be closed. Also in how we swallow, which is why speech pathologists have worked on swallowing disorders for years, um, and also in speech. So we often see that lisps are often persistent in people with sleep disorders. When we are resting our tongue, the tongue should be up against the roof of the mouth, okay? So the tip of the tongue should be right up here where we make our N sound, Mm, so we hold it right behind, but not touching the teeth. The remainder of the tongue should be sealed up against the roof of the mouth and out of the airway, all right? Um, the idea is that if the tongue is out of the airway, it's not falling back in when we're sleeping. That's where my contribution to the team is. With sleep apnea, we're not exactly sure where the, the constrictor is, but if we can take the tongue out of that, then that's a huge piece. What brings a patient into your office? I have people who come to me that have been through school speech language pathology. They have often had, um, you know, they've been working on their lisp. They may even still have a little bit of a re residual difficulty with their R sound or their sh, ch, j, the sh, the ch, and the j. Um, but most commonly it's that s and z. Uh, but that isn't usually the thing that brings them into my, into my room. Usually they're being referred by another professional who's noticed that, hey, that tongue is really pushing on those teeth and you're on your second or third set of braces or maybe you're still a teenager and that tongue pushing on those teeth has caused it to open up. And so they're actually usually there for cosmetic reasons because that tongue pushing on those teeth during the swallow or that tongue, that tongue pushing on those teeth at rest has totally messed up their teeth and they want a beautiful smile. And so they're coming to me for that. Um, but because they're there, they're like, oh, but you're a speech path, so we want you to help us with our speech. Um, a lot of the clients are also coming in telling me that, oh, you know, I have the worst pain in my jaw. Um, they often have um, temporomandibular joint disorders. Um, and so I'm often helping them with those as well. Um, but again, that's not what brought them to me, but they're being referred to me by the other professionals who do know that by getting that tongue up against the roof of the mouth, it actually can take the pressure off the masseter muscles. Um, so that's, that's kind of where I can. Will correcting one issue cure sleep apnea too? Just correcting a lisp isn't going to correct the sleep apnea. The, it, it may, I mean, I don't, but it, I suspect what more likely is going to happen, I'm gonna bring up my breath again, more likely, so if you just bring the tongue back, it could still be resting down on the floor of the mouth. We really need for a sleep apnea population, that tongue needs to be up and sealed against the roof of the mouth so that it can be suctioned and held out of the airway. Um, the side benefit is that maybe we have removed that residual lisp that was there, um, but that's, yeah, it, it doesn't usually work both ways. <laughs> Christina, what are some benefits of the Awake Together Summit? For me, coming to the conference today, the best part was really hearing the client perspectives. I really like hearing their various histories um, and just how sleep apnea is really truly impacting them. Um, and it's really exciting for me to be able to share my story on how I can potentially help be part of their story. To learn more, visit sleepapnea.org now.